All right. Well, welcome everyone. Um, if you are here, um, we are going to start with the school sims uh, a webinar now. And just a little backdrop on school sims. School Sims offers a transformative simulation-based professional learning experience for independent schools. Simulations are a series of scenarios in a choose-your-own-adventure format where they use both live actors and artificial intelligence to allow learners to experience the consequences of their decisions while bridging the gap between theory and practice. So we have Ken who's going to lead us through this. Um, he's an avid believer in the adage that experience is the best teacher and for over 30 years has been utilizing computer-based simulations to allow professionals to safely learn from decision-making mistakes around some of the most challenging problems of practice. For the past 10 years, Ken has been focused on the challenge of the silent crisis of leadership in K through 12 and he's working to enhance leadership capacity and improve critical thinking amongst school administrators. So welcome all, and Ken, thank you for joining us. You can take it away. Thank you very much, I appreciate that. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, and on behalf of the uh, School Sims team, welcome to everyone. Um, Danielle, you can transition. Um, as mentioned, I'm Ken Spiro, the founder of uh, and president of School Sims. And you'll forgive me, but this is something I've been doing this for quite some time and uh, I'm kind of kind of deep down my own little rabbit hole. Um, so bear with me on this, but I, I am I have there's a mystery I've been looking to be able to solve. And that is we know that experience is the best teacher. And we also know in next slide, Danielle, we also know that simulations approximate experience, right? We know from you wouldn't put a pilot in a plane or you wouldn't put a doctor or a nurse into a patient suite, or we wouldn't send anybody out from the military in any of the branches um, without hours and hours of simulation. Why is it that everybody isn't simulating? And especially in schools, given that the high the stakes are so high in our, we are actually, you know, our, we're, we're, we're navigating the lives of our children. Why isn't simulation a requirement? And especially in schools uh, where so many of the situations that you face as an administrator or that our staff faces, especially when you're student facing, are so contextual by nature, right? They are, um, we can teach what you need to know, but in terms of how you respond to that particular parent on that particular day, that's all based on experience, right? We only get better at that. I can't teach you how to handle a parent, but we get better at it through experience when we have the insight of the frameworks, if you will. Um, that's it's through experience that we actually are able to continue to get better. And especially when we have to dance, if you will, right? When the parent doesn't respond well, or the student doesn't respond well, or my colleague doesn't respond well, right? How we navigate is all driven through experience. Next slide. And so we do from the standpoint of of, of using simulations in this approach is to allow, is to provide a tool both for administrators, actually it's for administrators because it's either for leadership, but also for other staff members from their standpoint of providing scalable experience, right? Experience is the best teacher, that's great, but the school of hard knocks is rather painful. And so what this needs to be is both safe on the one hand, right? We can make mistakes and that's all about how we learn from experience. It is through making mistakes, but it also has to be accessible, right? It has to be something that I can do when I want it, with whom I want it, et cetera. And so having something that is browser-based, that's accessible to anyone, anytime, potentially, is a tool in the hands of, an, of a head of school relative to be able to navigate both your own development, your, your leadership team's development, and also your staff from the standpoint of both improving decision-making, alignment from a decision-making perspective, as well as uh, building resilience. And next slide. So again, as the audience had mentioned, you know, what simulations are, are really just kind of choose your own adventure type um, exercises in the browser. Uh, so you can share, we're actually gonna play one in a moment, uh, but really just to give you a sense of the, the opportunity with, from the standpoint of providing experience from deepening um, a, a staff member's capacity for decision making in particular contexts, but also when done as a team, it's also an opportunity for team building, for climate building, from the standpoint of engaging in 
an exercise where different perspectives are going to be had, right? Each individual is an individual, right? We're not a bunch of, it's not the Stepford Wives or whatever that uh, concept was, right? Where everybody's exactly in lockstep with each other. Everybody brings themselves to the table. And this is an opportunity to have those different perspectives, all valid, but to contribute and discuss so that people can see and benefit from not only their own experience, but the experience of others. Next slide. So let's try one. So we've um, selected, you know, given our time frame to play the, the parent teacher conference. It's something that obviously is present in all schools um, and is a challenge for teachers um, because you just don't know what's going to happen, right? You know, what you do know is that there's going to be uncertainty. And so an opportunity to have experiences with, an opportunity to reflect, a safe space to make mistakes um, is something that's clear. So why don't we go ahead and launch the sim? Any questions in the meantime, well, please feel free to post in chat. Uh, we will watch for them and be able to respond. But in the meantime, we can engage in the simulation. So actually, uh, yeah, okay, you can open the session. So it's important to note that <clears throat> when we define a simulation, um, obviously we're gonna pick a problem of practice. So that's gonna be the parent-teacher conference. But then it's important if we're gonna have an experience, it needs to be realistic. It needs to be authentic, right? It needs to be something that is, it's, well, it's not my school, but it could be. So we're gonna establish some context to define what school it is. So there'll be some upfront um, introduction to establish a context, not the context, but just a context that allows for that opportunity for situational awareness in the participants, what the opportunity to look at, well, what might be different in our climate or our approach to this and why? So why is it different? And understanding some of the implications, both the positives and potentially the negatives um, to the differences and be able to explore that. So, cause that all contributes to that opportunity for critical thinking. And it is important to note that as part of the experience um, when we're doing a simulation, there's no back button. You should know that going into it because, well, no mulligans. Like in life, you are facing an issue, you make a decision, you deal with it, right? There's no do-overs. You can't just say, whoa, whoa, whoa wait a minute, let me let's rewind, let's do that again. Um, and so in a sim, we really want you to live the life. And if you make a mistake, that's okay. The challenge is not how do we be perfect because we're never going to be perfect. It's how do we roll with it, whatever happens, um, because that's what we need to be able to do. We need to be able to be responsive in the moment, whether we make mistakes, whether we get it right, because even when we feel like we got it right, somebody disagrees, and then we've got to deal with that too. So uh, next slide or next screen. In this simulation, you will be introduced to a real life scenario where you will be presented with challenges and choices. As you interact with a parent during a conference, your path through the simulation will result from the decisions you make, as well as their consequences. At the end of the simulation, you will be provided with specific feedback on the choices you made in a feedback report. We hope this experience will offer you some insight to apply in your practice. That's a quick introduction, and now we're going to set the context. The simulation takes place about nine weeks into the school year on one of the drop-in parent-teacher conference nights. The conferences are listed on the school calendar and the head of school's office does the promoting and reminding of parents of the dates and times. The conferences are held from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. on two consecutive evenings. There are no appointments necessary to conference with the teacher. All the teachers are available in their classrooms and parents drop in to visit with any or all of their child's teachers one at a time. Okay, so just get setting the stage for what this is, when it is, because obviously time of year is an important aspect to the context, right? Is this the earlier conferences? Is this later conferences? Um, obviously, this always has a play. We want to establish people so that they can step into the role, if you will. Um, from that kind of perspective. Next. The head of school has communicated with teachers that the basic information to share at conferences is the student's academic performance and any concerns about the student's behavior. As the teacher, you and the school have communicated to parents that a student's academic grades and behavior issues are posted to the online electronic student management system in real time. Parents can check them anytime. 
You also send a weekly newsletter to all parents via email each week, highlighting the week's learning and previewing next week's learning. The school also encourages parents and teachers to initiate a meeting anytime either party feels a student is falling behind and needs more or different support. Nice. Before continuing in the simulation, please share what information you currently bring to parent-teacher conferences. Also, reflecting on your experience, do parents find that information useful and valuable? How do you know? So this is an opportunity. To, obviously, as mentioned, it is a choose your own adventure, so there will be choices, uh, decision-making that we're going to have to do. But sometimes we also just want to allow for open-ended responses and also opportunities for discussion, right? If this is a, if you're running this with your staff and the various teachers have an opportunity to reflect collectively, um, either in small groups or as a, as a collective or even individually, and then, you know, be able to, because these can be deployed asynchronously, but the opportunity to think about what they do, right? So we, we're going to tell you you're the teacher of in a moment, um, so that you can see who you are, so to speak, in the simulation. But we don't tell you much about you other than maybe how many, you know, at what grade and um, maybe how many years you've been teaching. But that's it, because we want participants to see themselves in the action. And so as a teacher, what, what do you bring? And this is not what you would bring in the sim. This is really open-ended to your own practice. And again, the opportunity to have uh, folks to engage in open-ended critical thinking and it's important to note that in a simulation, when it comes to experience, the goal is not to get it right, right? What are our best learning opportunities from an experience perspective? Our best learning comes from making mistakes. Our best learning comes from failing, right? We remember skinning our knees. We remember putting our hand on the stove, hopefully. <laughs> um, that's how we learn, right? We don't learn from getting it right, right? We often, that, that's not of note, unless it was a really big win, right? The big wins are obviously notable, but what we know from the brain, what we know in neuroscience is that the, the, in order to move experiences from short-term to long-term memory, which is a very long process, right? Part of that is emotional engagement. And often it, the emotional response to, and it's any emotion, by the way, it can be happiness, but it can also be embarrassment. It can also be fear. It can also be tension or stress, right? These are emotions that help these are the things that we remember, right? If we go back in time, these are the things that kept us alive. Uh, but these are the things that we want to make sure we provoke. And so it doesn't take much, obviously, for, for folks in schools at any level to put them into that space and their palms start to sweat and their heartbeat starts to go up because we tend to parent-teacher conferences make people nervous um, by nature because they're so unpredictable. So it really is an opportunity to um, collaborate and again, that becomes that side effect of engaging in this modality, which is engaging the team and getting people understanding that, A, they're not alone. B, there are actually other ideas other than kind of they can step out of their own box to hear what other people, their colleagues have to say in terms of how they do things. So at this point, we would, you know, in a larger setting, we, we would be able to open up and be able to capture um, the responses. And these get captured and placed into a feedback report, which we'll get to at the end. Um, but in the interest of time, you know, in, so we can get as far as we can through the um, the exercise, we're not going to put anything in here for now. But, you know, this is kind of the nature of the way this can be utilized um, when you're engaging this in an in-person or even an online um, or asynchronous type of activity with your staff. Okay. One last conference. It's been a long week, but you are almost done with this final round of parent-teacher conferences. Near the end of the second evening of parent-teacher conferences, at approximately 7.45 p.m., conferences are scheduled to conclude at 8 p.m., you're sitting in your classroom after a lull in conferences. Your thoughts about getting home soon are interrupted by the appearance of another parent in the doorway of your classroom. It looks like you will have one more conference tonight. You wave the parent in, they sit down and introduce themselves and share the name of their student. Then they continue. I'm sorry it's so late. I, I really wanted to be here to speak with you. I mean, I'd rather not be here at all and I'd rather not feel like I needed to speak with you, but I do think there are some performance issues that need to be addressed. Okay, so now, you know, again, she's talking to us, 
and we're going to need to respond. You recognize the name of the student who seems nice but has not seemed very motivated to learn. How would you begin the conversation? Start by sharing a positive comment about the student. Best to begin on an upbeat note to get things going. Start by calling attention to the short amount of time left for the conference. Get right to the point and get the conference focused on the student. Start by stating that this conference is about helping the parents support their student. This is a helpful way to quickly engage the parents and focus on their role. Start by suggesting that rescheduling a conference may be a good idea due to the time crunch. There are several important items related to this student's performance. It may be best to reschedule at a time that works for the parent. So as mentioned, this is a choose your own adventure and we're gonna to have to make a choice. And based on that choice, that will determine the branch we follow and we'll deal with consequences as they flow. And in a typical simulation, you have anywhere from five to 10 decisions um, that you that will navigate through. So again, you get to live the life. You get to live the the focus of of the meeting. Maybe a little bit of time that that transpires after the meeting, um, because that's the opportunity for having an experience. And it's not just in the moment, right? We don't want to micromanage a choice um, it, at, at the exclusion of the overall experience, because obviously there is going to be a next step, right? There's no such thing as a one and done. We want people to you know live the entirety of it. And maybe even self-correct downstream, right? There are usually opportunities for fixing a situation, or at least trying to, um, as it, even in the course of a very tight um, parent-teacher conference. But the opportunity to engage in that way is critical. So as you think about these choices, um, what we would do, uh, what we will do, is actually release a poll to get folks to uh, take a quick vote on on um, what choice you would make before talking about it. And if we can release the poll now, Nick. So simply go with uh, one, two, three, or four, A, B, C, or D. The reason why there's an E is, well, maybe you would do something else. And we certainly would want to capture that from a thinking or discussion perspective. So you can choose E if that's something that um, you think is uh, where your head is going. We could just go ahead and respond. Take five more seconds. Okay, so uh, the choice is B in terms of, and typically again, we would go with, you can uh, define how you want to um, utilize the uh, the way the voting works in terms of actually making a decision. And you know, part of the goal at this point, we, we released the poll first from a stylistic perspective um, to get participants to commit. Right in your own mind, right? So that we don't have that situation where you're kind of waiting. I, I, I think maybe this one, maybe that one, but you're kind of waiting for that first brave soul to raise their hand and say, you know, I would do B. And then everybody all of a sudden says, yeah, that's right. I, I, I'm, I'm with that. I, I do that too. Um, so in order to just get you in your own mind to commit without having to share, um, that's a first step. And now we would talk about it. So why would you go with the second choice? Anybody want to respond? So we start by calling attention to the short amount of time for the conference. And again, this is a, you know, each of the choices that we um, provide, we try to make them something, it's not necessarily what you should do, right? Because uh, sometimes the what you should do is it's obvious. And yet, as in life, right, we don't always do what we should do, right? We do what we do. And sometimes that makes sense. Sometimes it's in reaction to something and it may not make sense, but in the moment, maybe it did. So what we want to try and get at is um, we really want to uh, make sure that we have an opportunity to get people to focus on what they would do and, and even what they think they might not do, but they're curious about what would happen if they did do it, because this is all about having an experience. And so we would talk about the idea of, well, if I'm calling attention to the short amount of time left in the conference, that could be good because we, we want to set the stage and we don't want we want to set expectations properly, right? There's always trade-offs. So on the one hand, that's a positive. On the other hand, if the parent is sitting down, what's the attitude, what's their response going to be if you tell them, 
that, well, we don't really have a lot of time. And so what's their perception of the value that they're going to get? And so uh, in terms of navigating the emotional response of the parent, that's what we're trying to do, but also in terms of being able to communicate the value of, of the information about the student. So it's really important that we reflect upon, but there's no right or wrong answers here. There's just choices, and then we're going to deal with what happens in whatever choice we make. So if we voted on B, let's go with it. So let's go submit. I may be here at the end of the allotted time for conferences, but I expect to be treated with the same respect as any other parent who has taken the time to be here tonight. So please do not rush this. Okay, so that's her response and... Pause for a moment to take a quick internal inventory. How are you feeling after seeing the parent's reaction? How do you think your reaction will frame how you continue to interact with this parent? So what, again, here's that opportunity for the open-ended response. And we really do want to uh, allow for, you know, it, as part of this process, you know, when we're engaging in experience and the, the key in having in learning from experience is reflection, right? And so the simulation provides reflection opportunities at the end, and we'll, we'll get to that um, before we close. But so reflection is very important because, again, if we don't reflect without reflection, we're going to put our hands right back on that stove, right? But one of the things about reflection is also to be able to examine how we're feeling, because often, and especially in schools, we are reactive because of how we feel, right? A parent may say something, a student may do something that really, really causes us something, right? Could be delight. That also happens, but it could also be something that makes us really angry. It makes us embarrassed. It makes us really stressed out. Um, and it's important that we not that we help uh, staff members and ourselves to not make decisions in that moment, right? When we're reacting, when we're in that emotional space, chances are if we make a decision right then, it may not go as we hope. Um, and so, it's important to be able to pause and take a breath to validate one's feelings. And if this causes you a little bit of stress because you're also thinking about those parent teacher conferences in the past that have not gone well um, as predicted or even not as predicted, and it makes you really stressed, we wanna validate that and then allow for that breath to be taken and to reflect upon, you know, A, how you're feeling and what can you do at this point in order to navigate the steps forward, right? If we're not on a good foot right now, we still have to get through this conference. We still have an obligation to communicate with this parent. So how do we do that in the best possible way to reflect on that? And again, to have that opportunity for discussion and strategies that can be shared from peer to peer, but also you as the leader can be engaging from that perspective as well in terms of how we want to react, how do we want to respond to these kinds of things as a school as an institution in terms of being aligned. So go to the next. Responding to the parent, you acknowledge the parent's concerns and then let them know that you will work to review as much academic and behavior information as possible within the conference time tonight, which can serve as the basis for continued discussion. Before you can go on, you look up and see what you presume to be another parent looking into the classroom and waiting in the doorway. It seems they are there to visit with you before conferences end for the night at 8 p.m. in 10 minutes. You now feel rushed to complete this conference, which will not serve anyone well. What do you do? Excuse yourself to tell the new parent that you will meet with them, but will need to go beyond 8 p.m. Set expectations now so you don't feel so rushed. Tell the conference parent that time is getting even more limited and urge them to schedule another meeting with you. It just won't work to rush through this meeting. Stay focused on conferencing with the current parent and keep moving. Maybe you won't need the entire time with this parent after all. So we wanted to, you know, part of the, you know, this is obviously manufactured, right? Um, but the beauty of the education space is that, again, in, in the participant's mind's eye, right, it doesn't take much to put you into that space where you've been there before and to provoke that 
that that emotional response, that tension, that stress, that feeling that allows for this to be a more memorable, sticky experience, if you will, even though it is quote unquote manufactured. Um, and so by also incorporating the um, interruptions, the things that get in the way, right? If it were, if everything were as straightforward as it is in the book, or as it is in the article, or as it is in the 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 professional development session that was delivered by the sage on the stage, right? If it were always that easy, right, we'd get it right more of the time. And so the opportunity to inject these kinds of things to provoke that kind of response is something that can be quite compelling from the standpoint of um, the experience that the students are having. So in the meantime. Um, we are feeling rushed. What do we do? Do we excuse ourselves and tell the new parent to meet with them when they, they need to go beyond? Tell the conference parent it's time to get uh, even more limited or stay focused and, and let's let's plug through it and stay stay focused in the moment. Which one would you do? Why don't you release the poll? Yeah, let's take a quick moment to vote. You could do A, B, C, or D if you had a di have a different alternative. And again, the goal is not, it's not about being right. It's about making sure that um, there is that opportunity to engage in some critical thought and to have an experience and to be able to proceed from there. Okay, take three more seconds. And we'll end the poll. Okay, looks like B again. So if we can. And again, you know, at, at this point, once the vote, uh, the votes were tallied, we then have an opportunity for discussion. Uh, it's obviously wonderful to see when there's a difference uh, of opinion in terms of what to do. Um, and um, it's also an opportunity to, you know, obviously we're putting words in your mouth and the opportunity to surface um, one's perception about, right? We all think we will often express ourselves in a manner in which we think is appropriate. But that doesn't always take into account exactly how it's heard, right? We may have an intention that I'm actually being very thoughtful here because I want to make sure we have enough time to discuss your students, um, your child's uh, a, a performance and experience in the classroom. And I'm being thoughtful by trying to give them extra time, right? But that may not be heard exactly in that way. And that's obviously the trade-off. But again, so in terms of making this choice, why don't we go ahead and go with it? Too little time? The parent objects to allowing the time to be crunched. They tell you that if you don't take the time now to address their concerns, they will go to the head of school to arrange a meeting with them. I know this never happens. We're being so unrealistic here. But, you know, having an opportunity to experience and again, create that level of tension. Next. You look up to see that the parent who was waiting is no longer there, which has you feeling less rushed. How will you go about sharing academic and behavior information with this parent? You pull up the student's academic performance in your online gradebook and read to the parent a series of scores based on daily work, homework, and tests. Next, you mention any behavior incidents recorded and share additional observations of the student's lack of effort and disinterest in learning. You ask the parent what they wish to learn about their student's academic performance or behavior before sharing your information. Start by eliciting the parent's input. You provide the parent with the academic analysis, examples of student work and other information prepared prior to conferences. You ask the parent to take a few minutes and look over it. When they have done so, you ask what questions they have at this point. You ask the parent to tell you more about their student, what they like about school and don't like about school. Ask what their students outside of school interests are and anything else the parent feels would be important for you to know before you share the prepared conference information. So again, stylistically, these are four different ways of approaching. There's some nuance in here, obviously, whether you present, whether you ask the parent to review it themselves, and really, this is something that could open up a very interesting discussion from the school approach perspective from the head on down in terms of what kind of climate are we trying to establish? What kind of interaction do we want to have with some consistency maybe across the, the parent-teacher um, interactions that happen at different grade levels that in terms of an approach that actually puts the teacher in the 
best positioned to be able to respond effectively to what parents' demands are. Um, now, parents aren't necessarily thinking big picture, right? They're thinking about their student, and that's absolutely appropriate. But you know, teachers are obviously concerned not only about this one student, they're concerned about every student, but they're also concerned about the class. And obviously at the head of the school, the perspective goes even broader. And so being able to have consistency, being able to have an opportunity to explore what are the things that actually get in the way of a consistent approach, right? There's an opportunity to discuss, if you think about your visceral reaction, which we didn't quite have because you don't see the picture of a student yet. But what happens if we now explore the opportunity where it's a student we like or a student we have had less good experiences with? Does that affect how we're interacting with their parent? Or if we've had past interactions with this parent before, or our colleagues have had past interactions with this parent before, right? These are extraneous pieces of data that actually can affect subconsciously, if not consciously, the way we are responding. And it's important to have some, again, experience under one's belt to allow for that, uh, what we're drawing upon in terms of our gut reactions are actually informed by uh, thoughtful responses that actually can help us get through this particular um, interaction. So real quickly, we can release the poll one more time. And if we will quickly just choose A, B, C, or D, or E, if there's a, a fifth option there, which you think is not captured in these choices. Okay, we're nothing if not consistent. So why don't we end the poll? So we're at with B again. And um, so in terms of asking the parent what they wish to learn. So it's putting, again, putting it onto the, the student, onto the parents. Um, and again, from a stylistic perspective, right, this is the question of whether or not you want to lead or whether you want to, you know, be consultative, if you will, and be responsive to what the parent wants rather than assuming that they are going to be responsive to what you want in terms of what you think is the best answer. So being able to, you know, put it back on the parent, certainly a, a viable response. Why don't we go and see what happens? Yes, I understand the data, but my student does well in all their other classes. Their attitude toward this class indicates to me that the instruction needs to be more engaging. From my perspective, improving your performance is the key to improving my child's performance. Next. Commotion in the hallway. It seems that the conferences are dwindling down, and as a result, the hallway is filled with parents finding their way out. It is suddenly quite loud. The parent who had been waiting in the doorway did not close the door behind them when they left. You feel that even getting up to close the door might be taken as a sign of neglect on your part by the parent you are meeting with, and so you maintain your composure and work to conclude the conference. It's 8 p.m. and you realize that the parent is not satisfied with the conversation and seeking information and support beyond what you can provide. What will you do now? At 8 p.m. you thank the parent for coming and note that the time is up and conferences are ending for the night. Use a business-like tone and ask the parent to be in touch by email with any questions. Continue visiting with this parent beyond 8 p.m. Eventually, all the information prepared for the conference is shared with the parent. Ask the parent if it would be okay to pause the conference and meet again in a couple of days at the parent's convenience. Show the parent you are committed to their student. Suggest that there are issues at play here that are new to you. Another option, specify on next screen. On the next screen, note what elements of the options listed you would combine for a better decision, or note any other approach you would take beyond the options listed. So again, the, the process, you know, we've added a wrinkle here where you have three choices, but there can be a further option if you want to actually write it in on the next one. Why don't we go with B again, unless we can get to the, um, and so we can really quickly see the feedback report, and then I will show you one more thing. I appreciate all the information that you've shared with me tonight, but I feel we are still not addressing the heart of the matter, which is my student's attitude toward this class. 
at this point, I think it's really a matter of changing teachers. So please excuse me, but I'm going to speak with someone to make that happen. So um, if we can just click through to the end, I want to share some of the feedback report. This is not the end of the sim, as you'll see, um, but we'll just click through because I want you to see the feedback report Parents as we transition out. If you're interested in seeing more, I'm happy to share uh, the simulation with you or actually run a facilitated session for your team so you can see this in action. Um, but go ahead and submit that and next. So what happens at the end, just real quickly, again, that opportunity for reflection. This is the feedback report that's produced by the simulation, which can again be explored uh, individually, again, depending on, on each computer where the simulation is played would have this. And we you know, capture the open responses. Um, that was the first um, entry there, and it would have given you some considerations of what you might have been thinking about when you were filling that out. Um, and here's uh, for each scenario, we remind you what the scenario, the scene was, what the learning objective in that scene, remind you of the choice, the other choices, and the specific feedback on your choice, again, to reflect on what happened in this context and whether that would happen in your context as well. Um, so this is the feedback report that's produced. And again, we can share this um, if anybody is interested. And if you can stop sharing, Nick, for a moment so I can share. So one real quick thing to, you know, before we open it up for any questions is just so you understand in terms of the implementation of utilizing the simulations, we have a library of simulations, which include both leadership titles um, as well as teacher titles. Um, so that you can engage, again, from the leadership perspective, um, which can be shared, obviously, with all staff, so they get a sense of what it's like to be making decisions when you're in the chair, um, but also um, staff-level decisions. So in terms of being able to navigate you know, professional development, professional learning, whether it's in PLCs, whether it's in um, coach-led sessions, one-to-ones, or leader-led sessions, any of these are options in terms of an integrating a SIM into them. Um, and this is the list of, of the library that you would be able to subscribe to. But the way, the manner in which it's deployed is via a portal, um, which you would have access to, which looks something like this, where you'd be able to see which SIMs you're using. You'd be able to assign to particular users. Um, you can obviously view the simulations in terms of what's in the library and be able to select what you'd want and then be able to utilize it across whether you're using them again in teams, assigning it to teams, whether you are. Um, assigning it to individuals, whether you are running it yourself in, in, a, in, a, in a professional learning meeting or in a strategy meeting or in a pre-service meeting, uh, however you want to use it, it is an annual subscription so that you can deploy the sims where you want, when you want, with whom you want, as often as you want, totally up to you in terms of being able to deploy this kind of professional learning, professional development to help both with the skills and also with the team. So with that, I will open it up to any questions that folks might have. Um, it was a delight to be able to share this with you. And again, if you're interested, um, we are happy to run a session with your teams. Uh, if you're interested in seeing the sim, please let us know. Um, actually, if I stop sharing, we can put back on the uh, presentation. As a people, there is a, um, then if you wanted to share again, the final screens. Um, People would like more information. Um, also on our website at schoolsims.com, there's a variety of resources that you can uh, look at in terms of past webinars that we've done, recordings, um, more information about you know, research relating to SIMS if you're interested in evidence-based, um, and again, more about what they are. But uh, happy to respond to any questions you might have and would love to interact with you further.